Hello to the nobody that watches this, and welcome to another episode of The Nightly News. I keep meaning to do this at 11 p.m., and it is now 12 p.m. I, uh, between like 7 p.m. and 11 p.m., uh, I watched all of like two shows, and somehow I just keep pausing for shit, and next thing I know, two hours worth of television takes me like four hours. Um, but finally I am here. Uh, what is this? Uh, basically, this is a late night show uh, where we uh, read the news. Uh, it's like I remember hearing about an old uh, late night talk show where the host would literally just pull out a newspaper and start reading the news. And so basically, that's all this is. I uh, would be doing this anyway, reading the newspaper as it were, but of a digital variety. And uh, so I figured, why not do this on camera four times a week? Um, so. And I keep trying to do make it for 11, so people would know to tune in, but I keep failing at that, so. There we go, so it's currently 12 o'clock, and we are starting the nightly news. Um, I was just, if you're wondering what shows I was watching, I was watching uh, Best World, and uh, Irma Vep, and uh, they were pretty good, good times. I noticed that this, uh, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but this we will adopt your baby meme has been going around all day uh, in relation to the new ruling by the Supreme Court um, saying that uh, um, that uh, well, not that new, uh, not that new of a, uh, the previous ruling of the Supreme Court that has to do with abortion and uh, the conservative uh, argument that uh, that um, oh there's more than enough people out there to willing to adopt babies that there's no reason for us to be aborting uh, any of them which of course is insane because the uh, system is overflowing with uh, abandoned children um, but there has actually been another Supreme Court ruling since then that has everyone up in a tizzy um, and that has to do with um, religion apparently uh, there was a person um, I guess he's a coach uh, who was known for praying before or during or after games or all three of them and uh, the narrative that I guess liberals are pushing is that um, the Supreme Court has said that it's uh, okay for coaches and teachers to force students to pray with them or else be uh, suspended or whatever, um, which doesn't seem to be the reality. Conservatives, on the other hand, are pushing this narrative that, uh, A, that the liberals are lying, and B, that um, the court case that that the coach was simply praying by himself, that he was uh, praying by himself and, and that's it, and then got suspended for it, um, and that this is defending his right to pray by himself, um, which would be, if, if that were true, then I can understand that, but that neither of those stories are actually seem to be the reality. I uh, pull, I managed to find an article that went into what he was, ac what actually happened. Apparently, the coach was he, he was known for praying before, during, or after games, but it became more and more popular where, like, f at first some of his students would join with him and pray, so originally it was just him, but then other students would join in, and this has been going on for years, and apparently it has um, snowballed to the point where finally at this one game it was such a big event that like the opposing team was getting involved and there was like a local politician there and there was some sort of weird sort of riot thing where like people were trying to rush the field to pray with him and they got hurt or something and so like it became this whole thing where it was like it became an, a, a, an event you know like a moment that kind of uh, interfered with the the event of the game and thus the coach was suspended and and finally like the boot was put down like you can't be doing this anymore and so then the Supreme Court stepped in and said hey wait no that's a step on his religious freedoms he has a right and then so they cracked down on that and so I think you can see both where everyone's side is coming from in that situation um, and nobody's necessarily, the liberals aren't 100% right on what they're saying, but neither are obviously the conservatives. Um, 
and what a shit show that is so that's what's been going on in the supreme court right now but let's start with some canadian news and some ap news i live in canada um i use city news for my uh main news source uh basic news source and then i have other specialty news sources but these guys take almost directly from uh, the associated press uh for their news so it's, it seems like a pretty good place to take your news from and let's start from the top uh... let's see here anything interesting uh... uh do 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 russia pouring fire on ukrainian city as offensive mounts i heard that they missiled a mall but i think that article is before that Average GTA rent price saw highest increase in three years. That's awful. I heard that uh, I live in Hamilton and somebody was telling me that the rent in Hamilton is getting so high it's one of the highest in the country. Yeah, that, c that cannot be true. That would be insane because it's such a, a terrible neighborhood. You have no idea. You have no idea what I go through. Uh, let's see here. Queen Elizabeth II travels to Scotland for a week of events. Good for her. Blah blah blah. Mystery over deaths of 21 teenagers at South African nightclub. I hope they figure out that mystery soon. Uh, four injured as apartment building roof collapses in Budapest. That's Hungary. War damaged Russian weapons on display in Poland. Georgia man sentenced to die kills self in prison. That's horrible. Celebrity birthdays for the week? Nah. Nope. Residents injured as powerful storm hits southern Dutch city. This is from The Hague, Netherlands. You don't often get news from the Netherlands. A powerful storm hit, uh, hit a town in the southern Netherlands one day, tearing the roofs off at least four houses and causing an unknown number of injuries, local emergency services said. Video posted on social media showed a water spout close to the town of Zerikzi. Vilig Zeeland, the organization that coordinates emergency response, said there was a significant damage to a number of streets in Zerikzi, a historic fishing town with just over 10,000 residents, about 140 kilometers southwest of Amsterdam. In addition to roof tiles flying around and knocked down trees, the roofs have been blown off four homes, the organization said in a statement. Further details were not immediately available. Wow. <laughs> what a story. Police say restaurant may workers shot in argument over mayo. A man who complained there was too much mayonnaise on his sandwich opened fire at an Atlanta sandwich shop, killing one employee and injuring another, police said. What the fuck? The shooting happened around 6.30 p.m. Sunday at a subway. At a subway! Not even, like, a special sandwich place, a fucking subway. But can you imagine working at a subway and being killed because you fucking put too much mayo on a sandwich? Jesus Christ. <laughs> that is fucked. Police said the man argued with the two female workers and then opened fire, news outlets supported. What the hell? As of early Monday morning, Atlanta police didn't release information about an arrest or details about a suspect. This is what happens when people are allowed to just, like, open carry. This is what happens. Police did not immediately release the names of the two women and the condition of the injured woman wasn't immediately available. It just breaks my heart to know that someone has the audacity to point a weapon and shoot someone for as little as too much mayonnaise on a sandwich. I gotta admit, I hate mayonnaise. I'm not a fan. There's a new Twitch viewer record and it happened during a boxing stream. Well, good for them. Supreme Court's abortion ruling sets off new court fights, so I'm sure the courts around the states are being flooded with new fights.
company buying Trump's social media app faces so who would be who would want to buy True Social? Digital World Acquisition Corp. Apparently, why? Is my question. Like, are they somehow affiliated with Trump? Is this some kind of insider bullshit? Or I'm confused. And none of that actually was very interesting or helpful. Alright. Greece's 1,130 migrants turned back at sea in, th in three days. Greece's Coast Guard on Monday said it had prevented more than a thousand migrants and refugees crossing to its islands in boats from the nearby coast of Turkey over the past three days. Over a thousand? The agency said it had turned back boats in 24 separate incidents, 24, involving an estimated 1,130 people near five Greek eastern Aegean Sea islands, with most of the interceptions occurring off Lesbos. Sounds like an island. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's a very immature joke. Uh, Greece has toughened its migration policy in recent years, defending its decision to carry out regular interceptions of boats at sea, a practice human rights groups argued undermines the right of refugees fleeing danger to seek international protection. Athens argues that most of the people heading for its shores are not at any risk in Turkey. Well, that's good for them. Heavy rains and floods hit northwest Turkey, so they're not at risk except for from the heavy rains and floods. Uh, cool. Itchy, itchy, itchy. Justices are making so many choices right now, apparently. Justices side with doctors convicted in pain pill schemes. The Supreme Court on Monday ruled for doctors who face criminal charges for overprescribing powerful pain medication. Um, doesn't sound like anything that is important enough to worry about. Kosovo arrests man accused of war crimes in 1999 fighting. Calls for expansion of fourth dose eligibi eligibility as wastewater data shows uptick in COVID-19 cases. Yes, I just saw this on the TV. They were even saying that um, that our case numbers uh, in hospitals are on par with what they were last year at the same date. You know, when we were far more serious about the pandemic. Um, should I read this, or did I just explain enough of it to go on? Sure, let's see what these people are saying. Uh, Toronto Public Health is ramping up COVID-19 vaccine efforts this summer, setting up pop-ups at various events to prepare for the fall when COVID-19 cases are expected to rise. However, another wave could come sooner than expected. The clinics are operating as many have called for an expansion of fourth dose eligibility in the province. In Quebec, anyone over the age of 18 is eligible to receive their second booster, but in Ontario it is still limited to a select group of people. Those who are 60 years of age and older, indigenous people, and those who live in... That seems like a weird choice. And those who live in high-risk settings are eligible to receive their next vaccine three months after their third dose. Why is it indigenous people get a fourth dose first? The renewed... I just, I know I've I've heard before uh, that certain reasons why uh, minority groups don't trust medicine or doctors is because they have been used in the past as guinea pigs for medicine research. And then you see this, or it's like, yep, we're only giving it to the old people and the indigenous people. It's like, wait, what? What do those two things have to do with each other? 
Anyway, the renewed calls come as wastewater data shows yet another uptick in COVID-19 infections and the threat of new variants. Global health epide epidemiologists Raywat Dionandan said he doesn't see any reason not to expand the eligibility. Indeed. We have an increase in transmission as perceived via the wastewater data. B4 and B5 variants are supplanting B1 and B2. Those have potentially a higher risk of reinfecting those who have previously been infected, and a forced dose increases your ability to prevent reinfection, so I think now's the time, said Dio Nandan. We need to look at the data, and what the data is telling us is that we have about three times as many people in the hospital with COVID-19 as we did this same time last year. See... That's different than what I heard. I, I heard it was about the same amount of people in the hospital with COVID as we did last year. Now they're saying three times. The indi either way, it's pretty concerning. The indication from wastewater is go uh, like even if you uh, pick a difference and say it's 1.5 times, <laughs> like half halfway through. I don't know. Uh, but even then, it's like that's a lot. The Ontario government tells City News they are currently waiting on the National Advisory Committee on Immunization for recommendations on booster doses for the rest of the population. Meanwhile, Health Canada's response was to contact the provincial government for further information. Dion Anden adds in Israel, where fourth doses have been widely given out, data showed there were no additional safety issues to a fourth dose. The Israeli data shows that a fourth dose offers considerably considerable additional protection against infection, symptomatic ish disease, hospitalization, and death above and beyond the third dose. Compared to the first and second doses, the population who has received a third dose is much lower. Over 82% of the population have received two doses of COVID-19 vaccine. However, 50% have had their third jab. I am a three jab person. The Onandan said the reason for this is can be likely attributed to public health messaging. One is uh, the strange narrative that the pandemic is over. It's not over. Second is failure to communicate to the public that this is at minimum a three dose vaccine, not a two dose vaccine, said Dio Nandan. So this is fundamentally a problem of public health, communication, and public education, and our inability to combat the enormous amounts of misinformation that are floating. I went to the, this is me not reading anymore. I went to the Shoppers Drug Mart uh, today to pick up some Drano because my drains were clogged. Um, and they had taken down their plastic divider on their uh, cashier. And I asked the nice little cashier clerk lady, I was like, why did you take down your divider? Nice little cashier clerk lady. And the nice little cashier clerk lady said that apparently, um, first she said, well, you know, it's over and we wanted to help push the idea that it's over. Uh, we know that people want it to be over and so we we took it down, or something like that. We, people wanted it to be over and I was like, well, it's great that as long as people want it to be over, it'll just be over. And she was like, okay, let me rephrase that. The Shoppers Drug Mart forced us to take it, take it down. And I was like, they forced you, so they like made you. And she's like, yes, it was a command that we had to take down the plastic barriers. So I think that's kind of bullshit. Um, and fucked and scary that that's the way we're at right now when uh, things are still not people don't people look around and see that nobody's wearing masks anymore and they say well I guess I can take off my mask then and not paying attention to what the actual scientists and doctors are saying I even like I get people will ridicule me j for wearing my mask and I'm just keep on walking just keep on walking that's all you can really do I would honestly be wearing my mask right now, but nobody ever actually watches this stream, so I've, I don't have anything to worry about. But if I, if I thought people were watching, I would totally put on a mask so they couldn't transfer their COVID through the... I'm trying to make a joke here, but it's not really working out. <laughs> it would go through the computer, and uh, like a computer virus, and I would get it that way, and it would be horrible. So luckily, that's not happening, so I'm not wearing a mask. That was a horrible joke. I was going way too far uphill to try and make. 23 years ago today, Pokemon Pinball was first released for the Game Boy Color in North America. I had it. I had it, and it had a rumble thing, and it rumbled. It included a rumble pack powered by a single AAA battery. Yep, I remember that. Ah, I remember that. Classic, classic game. 
Yeah. I miss it. Anyway. Did Jesus. Breaking. This man is wanted for shooting a Hendersonville police officer tonight. Non-critical during a pursuit. Suspect abandoned his van on Gibson Drive in Madison and fled on foot. He is armed with two guns. Officers have blanketed the area. See him? Call 911 immediately. You know, if you just see a dude running around with two massive-ass uh, assault rifles, then also check his face and make sure it's the right guy running around with two massive-ass. You wouldn't want to accidentally call the cops on the wrong guy running around with two massive-ass assault rifles. That's the key. It's a key point. Grammy Award winning songwriter Ken Williams dies at 83. I'm not sure I know who that is. Oh! Williams, along with Rudy Clark and J.R. Bailey, penned the now classic song Everybody Plays the Fool. Everybody plays a fool sometimes. I think that's the song they meant. Oops, I hit the wrong button there. That makes it get all confused. California loves artists. Well, good for them. Podcast dramas morph to TV shows and Hollywood reappraisal. Yeah, I wish that would happen to me. I did a thing where uh, for a while I was releasing my uh, books as podcasts and nobody gave a shit, so I stopped doing that. Kind of like this nightly news. Uh, let's see here. Lawyers want 101-year-old alleged ex-Nazi guard acquitted. I mean, he is 101 years old. Hamas says captive Israelis' condition has deteriorated. Well, that's disturbing. Canada ships seeds to Ukraine to help hard-pressed farmers targeted by Russia. Peel Public Health reports first case of monkeypox. I'm like, fuck all that other stuff. Monkeypox in Canada? No. Say it's not so. There's a man in his 30s. Uh, several weeks after Ontario's first infections. This is their second infection? Or, no, they've had many infections since then. There have been currently 45 confirmed monkeypox cases, along with 12 probable and 30 suspected cases since virus was first confirmed in the province since mid-May. Most of the cases confirmed are in Toronto and all are male. That's interesting. The suspected probable cases include seven... F okay, so all the confirmed cases are male, but there are some suspected cases that are, 30, uh, that are female. I got really confused for a second later. Symptoms for monkeypox can include fever, headache, fatigue, and a, a rash. Probably just supposed to be a rash. Or lesions which may appear on the face or genitals and spread to other regions. I thought that was going to be like face or genitals and no other places. Just the face and the genitals. Don't ask us why. Don't ask us how they transfer between the spots, but they, they do. Probably while you're fellatioing yourself. That's when it happens. That's why there's a. Uh, if you want to prevent the spread of monkeypox, you must stop fellatioing yourself. That's the first step. The first of many steps to help prevent um, monkeypox. But of course, conservatives are going to say that um, for freedom's sake, they will have to fellatio themselves extra and do it all the time on video camera to own the libs. And that's the power of love to the to the song that the, the that's the power of love as they're twisting themselves in creative ways. 
Russian super yacht seized by U.S. Good job. Israel loosens abortion regulations in response to ROE. Is that good? I've been hearing that that's been going on around the place. A lot of these countries saw what happened in the U.S. were like, well, we don't want to do that. And so they went in the opposite direction. A woman has a complete right over her body, says Health Minister Nitzan Horowitz from the Small Liberal Merits Party. Why we asked him, I'm not sure, but okay. Good to know. U.S. sending advanced missile systems to Ukraine. I'm, I support that 150%. I need a drink. I am thirsty. I need some water. I'm going to be right back. I'm going to get myself some water. defense decision to name nephew minister of multiculturalism because of course these damn conservatives are all about the damn nepotism white house to resume its full tour schedule next month toronto police bus brazen moving okay whatever uh <laughs> can i not read the headline that it's probably not worth talking about fed sees websites after probe of pirated latin music okay Do, do, do. MSNBC appoints Alex Wagner as Fortnite primetime anchor. Well, good for her. Pickpocket thefts on the rise at Toronto nightclubs. Good to know. So if you are thinking about going to a Toronto nightclub anytime soon, watch your purses and your pockets and your wallets and your wieners. Uh, Supreme Court backs caution. Yes, that's what we were talking about. That has everyone in the tizzy today. Helicopter pilot helping Alaska firefighters dies in crash. Heckler charged with assault after confronting Rudy Giuliani. Fine, we will click on that. A heckler who clapped former New York City Mayor Giuliani on the back at a campaign event was arrested, jailed for more than 24 hours, and now faces an assault charge. The episode Sunday at a Staten Island supermarket produced dueling accounts with Giuliani likening the touch to being hit by a bullet, saying it could have killed him, while the man's lawyer is described as a tap meant to get the mayor's attention. Security camera video obtained by the New York Post captured the encounter which happened as Giuliani was campaigning for his son Andrew, who is seeking the Republican nomination for governor in Tuesday primary. Giuliani was seen standing with a group of people when a man walking past reached out, touched the Republican's back with an open palm, and then said something as he walked away. Police said the man said, what's up, scumbag? Giuliani said the man accused him of being a woman killer, which he took to be a reference to the Supreme Court's ruling overturning Roe v. Wade. In the video, Giuliani barely reacts when his back was touched. When in interviews afterwards, he said it knocked him forward and nearly caused him to fall. Speaking to fellow Republican radio host Curtis Slewa uh, on WABC, he said it felt like somebody shot me. Later in a news conference on Facebook, he said it was as if a boulder hit me. I might have ordinarily ignored it, Giuliani told Slewa, but he said he decided to call the police because Democrats get away with everything. I called the 123 precinct and I told the people there, I want this guy held and I want him arrested, he said. These people have literally zero shame. Zero. Absolutely insane. Uh, 
I actually have a gift for this. Do I have it on my computer though? No, I don't. It's on my phone. That's okay. I can get to it easily enough if I like it. So I will like that lady's random tweet. And then I'll go here. And go to Twitter. And go to likes. And reply with the gif of Hercules saying disappointed. I don't even know what they're talking about, but it just seems very fitting for that in response to that. And I do like posting relevant memes. Alright. See? I did that. Alright, moving on. It was worth it. <laughs> it was one hundred percent worth it. <laughs> uh, anyway. Jesus Christ. Eight year old Florida boy accidentally shoots and kills baby. An eight year old boy accidentally shot and killed a one year old girl and injured a two year old girl at a Florida motel on Sunday, authorities said. The boy's father left the gun holstered in his Pensacola motel room closet. After he left the room, his son found it and fired a round that passed through and killed the baby and struck the toddler. Jesus Christ. How is it that, like, stormtroopers can't shoot the broadside of a barn, but an eight-year-old boy can hold a gun and accidentally shoot it and hit two people in another room? What the fuck is with guns? <laughs> That is fucked. <laughs> Absolutely fucked. The children who were shot belong to the girlfriend of the father. The toddler is expected to recover. The baby, not so much. That is fucked. The boy's father returned to the room took the gun, and what investigators believe were drugs, and left the room again. Well, that's fun. What the actual fuck? That was a fucked up story, pretty much from beginning to end. Alright. That's horrible. That's in Hamilton. That's here. Hamilton police are looking for a suspect wanted in connection with a serious sexual assault that left a woman with life-threatening injuries. Officers were flagged down by a witness in the area of Barton Street East. Okay, that's on the east end. I had a girlfriend that lived very near there. She was younger than 46, though, so. Thank the gods. People are fucked. That's fucked. Toddler dies after accidentally being left inside car as mother taught at Bancroft School. These cars are fucking killers. City. Nope, that's not what I clicked on. Uh, Mary Mara, TV actor for decades, dies in apparent drowning. Mary Mara, who appeared on television shows including Ray Donovan, Dexter, and ER. I can't picture her. Uh, in an acting career that spanned more than 30 years, has died in what New York authorities said appeared to be a drowning accident. Is there a picture of her somewhere? Like anywhere? You guys can get a picture of her? Really?
So I don't know her. But okay, that sucks. Excuse me. Yeah, this is what I'll talk about. Russian missile strike hits crowded shopping mall in Ukraine. Russian long Russian long range bombers struck a crowded shopping mall in Ukraine's central city of Kremenchuk with a missile on Monday, raising fears of what President Volodymyr Zelensky called an unimaginable number of victims and one of the most daring terrorist attacks in European history. Zelensky said that many of the more than 1,000 afternoon shoppers and staff inside the mall managed to escape. Giant plumes of black smoke, dust, and orange flames emanated from the wreckage, with emergency crews rushing in to search broken metal and concrete for victims and put out fires. Onlookers watched in distress at the sight of how an everyday activity such as shopping could turn into horror. The casualty figures were changing as rescuers searched the smoldering rubble into early Tuesday. Ukraine's emergency services reported late Monday that at least 16 people were dead and about 60 wounded. Soldiers worked into the night to lug sheets of twisted metal and broken concrete as one drilled into what remained of the shopping center's roof. Drones whirred above. Clouds of dark smoke still emanated from the ruins several hours after the fire had been put out. We are working to dismantle the construction so that it is possible to get machinery in there since the metal elements are heavy and big and disassembling them by hand is impossible. So that sucks. I like really sucks. Like that's bullshit. Fuck Russia. Is all I'm saying. With a big yawn that made it sound like I didn't care that much, but I swear that's not true. This is why they w will not hire me to actually tell the news. Oh, how I've tried. I'm not. But. Just moments away from Lizzo Carpool on the Late Late Show. Remember that as much as this is like a Late Late Show, or just a Late Show, um, it's no replacement for a good Late Show. And so you should definitely say, remember to set your DVR each night for The Daily Show and Colbert and Last Week Tonight and whatever else you're interested in. Moving on. Um, yawn. I'm confused by these words. Air Guard troops doing space missions face identity crisis? When are what? Air, what space missions? What? Are, are we talking about the show for all mankind? <laughs> What's this? What have we done space missions? <laughs> and why have we done so many space missions and now there's an identity? What is happening right now? None of this makes any sense to me. I don't understand what they're talking about. Go away. <laughs> I don't understand and it makes me confused and angry. Alright. Now we will do science and entertainment, I guess, is the everything else. Uh, no, that's right. You know what we should do first? We should do Vice first. Because that's more news. More specialized, focused news. Let's go. I guess not that focused, but... I don't really want to go to jail. How one doctor kept doing abortions post ROE. Good for them. Congress wants to spend $45 million on nukes, and Navy says it doesn't need. The House Armed Services Committee ha added an amendment to the 2023 military budget that will continue to fund the development of sea launched nuclear cruise missiles. This despite the Navy's own budget zeroing out the items, saying it didn't need the nukes, and Biden White House saying the weapons were unnecessary. Yep. That's fucked. <sighs> Stupid.
US military. Or US government. US whatever. What? Senate Intelligence Committee approves of giving people who smoke weed security clearance. I realize now, <laughs> I realize now that that means that like somebody's who was already set to receive a security clearance would still receive it if they were tested and found to be smoking weed. But for some odd reason, the first time I read that, I took that as them saying that they would go out and find everyone in the world who smokes weed and says you are responsible enough to have a higher security clearance <laughs> just like do you smoke weed here have a security clearance <laughs> why well, <I> thank you <laughs> i shouldn't smoke so much weed um q and on is celebrating the return of its leader after 18 months of silence what you mean fucking ron what's his nose What's his name? Uh, Ron Watkins, I think is his name. Let's not forget this dude is Q, right here. This guy. See this guy? He's Q. See this fucker? <laughs> this guy's Q. This guy? He's Q. Just wanted to remind you guys that. Alright. On Friday night, Q, the anonymous... Or not so anonymous. It's Ron Watkins. It's him. It's this dude here. Not, it's it's saying rumored, but he pretty much admitted to it in the last episode of the HBO documentary. So it's this guy right here, Ron Watkins. On Friday night, Q, the anonymous leader of the QAnon conspiracy movement, returned after more than 18 months of silence. And this is what he said. This guy right here, this dude. Here. Okay, we'll get rid of that. Um, Move this here, put that down there, bring this over here, all right. This is what he said. Uh, sh shall we play the game again? The Q account wrote in their typical cryptic style on the fringe message board 8kun, formerly known as 8chan. The unexpected return on the same day that Roe v. Wade was overturned, of course, because he was probably so excited about it. He was like, yay, it's Trump's vision coming true. Um... <coughs> Uh, yay, it's, uh, Trump, Trump's vision coming, um, true. The unexpected return sent the millions of people who still adhere to the QAnon belief system, which claims there's a, a cabal of elites working to control the world, into spasms of excitement and predictions that Q's return meant all of their wild predictions were about to come true, finally. But experts tracking the QAnon phenom phenomenon quickly discovered that the posting of the new Q drops was at the very least facilitated directly by the people writing 8kun and possibly written directly by them. Experts like Fred Brennan, who was the founder of 8chan before it was taken over by current owner Jim Watkins and his son Ron Watkins, again this guy, discovered that the site administrators had altered the way users on the site like Q identify themselves just hours before the first new Q drop appeared on Friday. The change in the system should have meant that the secure trip code that Q uses to verify their identity would have broken. However, when Q posted, the trip code was the same, suggesting that someone involved in running the site had manipulated it to appear as if it was the real Q. Jim, Ron, or someone with access to the 8kun server posted the latest Q drops, Brennan told Vice News. His, his assessment was backed up by several other experts who closely tracked the origins and spread of QAnon. At a bare minimum, it's clear that either Q is closely coordinated with 8kun admins, or the post was actually written by an 8kun admin. The anonymous founder of the Q Origins Project, which seeks to document how the movement came about, told Vice News, which would be him. It would be him. They're just saying it's him. We know it's him. Everyone knows it's him. It was him. Either Jim Watkins is no longer in control of his admin account, or Jim Watkins did this himself. It's not Jim Watkins. He is... A Luddite, it's his son. It's it's this guy. Right here. His father just supports him in everything he does and loves to troll as well and thinks this is all just some good fun. Which is sick. And grotesque. But I'm glad I was able to remind everyone that it was this guy, right here. 
This is the guy. Let's see if we can stick our mouse up his mouth. Yeah, what's up? What? Sorry. I think I just tripped out for a second there. Alright, let's move on. Super Earth could host alien life for 84 billion years, study finds. What does that even mean? A special class of planets could potentially host life for as long as tens of billions of years. What, uh, you think you can find a sun that lasts that long? Super Earths, which are rocky planets that are more massive than Earth but smaller than ice giants such as Neptune, are abundant in star systems across the Milky Way. Indeed, our own solar system may be somewhat of an outlier in lacking this type of world. Now scientists led by Merit Moldu, Louis, Lou, whatever, a PhD student studying exoplanets at the University of Zurich, have presented new evidence that so-called cold super-Earths that orbit their stars at more than twice the distance between Earth and the Sun can maintain temperate surface conditions for up to give to um, for up to give or take eight billion years, a time span that suggests that the concept of planetary habitability should be revisited and made more inclu inclusive, but I don't understand. Again, suns can't last that long. In addition, Mol Lu and her colleagues found that some super-Earths that are kicked out of their home star systems by gravitational per perturbations or other mechanisms could potentially maintain liquid water habitats for as much as 84 billion years. What? Because these rogue worlds would not be affected by the death of any host star. Explain how this is possible. Does it have to do with uh, their cores somehow being able to maintain heat? But how? Like, tell me how. Don't just say this bullshit shit. Here we argue that it should be considered that habitable planets could be very different from Earth and that we should remain open-minded when investigating such potentially habitable worlds. Of course, it is also important to remain cautious and not jump into conclusions when considering such exotic habitats as we know very little or not can be left to speculation. The new study is built upon a theoretical model of these tantalizing worlds rather than real observations because it is challenging to spot these cold super-Earths with current telescopes. Most exoplanets are detected when they pass in front of their star relative to our perspective on Earth, causing a slight dip in starlight. As a result, all known super-Earths have relatively short orbits that produce frequent brightness drops making them simpler for telescopes to pinpoint. However, scientists have suspected for years that super-Earths in more distant orbits could be compelling targets in search for extraterrestrial life. Models suggest that these planets could retain their primordial atmospheres, which are dominated by hydrogen and helium, for billions of years. So they keep their atmosphere for billions of years. That's not the same thing. These atmospheres are distinct from those surrounding some rocky planets in our own solar system, including Earth, which evolved atmospheres in more complicated compounds such as oxygen, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen. The hypothesis that there could be liquid water on a planet that has a primordial atmosphere has been around for over 20 years, and since then more studies have worked on this idea. We wanted to further investigate the evolutionary aspect, in other words, we calculated how long liquid water could be present and what would be necessary for a planet to have longest possible duration of liquid water. Liquid water is the magical ingredient for life as we know it on earth which is why scientists prioritize it in search for aliens elsewhere in the universe to delve into the potential exotic habitability of cold super earths which primor uh, with primordial atmospheres so, uh, in the w words uh, I'm losing my in the words of the study Mul Luce and her colleagues ran over 1000 simulations of planets with different masses atmospheres and orbital distances the team discovered that planets between 1 and 10 times the mass of Earth with atmospheres that are 100 to 1,000 times thicker than Earth's skies might occupy a hospitable sweet spot. Worlds that orbit too close to the stars are expected to lose their primordial atmospheres under the harsh stellar glare, but planets that are located at distances between beyond the orbit of Mars can hang onto its hydrogen and helium envelope. At this potentially safe distance, these atmospheres could act as greenhouse gases by absorbing, so it's not the core, it's the atmosphere. Absorbing infrared radiation, providing a source of heat that might nurture life in liquid water oceans. This class of planets could provide habitable conditions for 5 to 8 mil billion years, but would eventually become inhospitable once their stars began expanding during their dying stages, reports the study. In a mind-boggling twist, the researchers found that the rogue planet... Uh, 
Researchers found that the rogue planets that are ten times as massive as Earth with atmospheres that are about one percent the mass of Earth could ha be habitable for an astonishing 84 billion years, according to the models. The study suggests that these unbound worlds uh, would probably be too hot for life at this point in the universe's 13.8 billion year lifespan, but could become hospitable over the next several billion years. What? Any speculative aliens on these worlds would have to grapple with very... So they're saying that just the conditions of the atmosphere keep the heat in? Any speculative aliens on these worlds would have to grapple with very different conditions compared to Earth, including enormous surface pressures and a lack of direct sunlight as a result of thick atmospheres, especially when you're flying through space without a galaxy to be in, or a solar system, I should say. However, the team notes that extreme life forms on Earth can deal with high pressures and deep ocean trenches, while some organisms rely on chemical energy sources instead of drawing fuel from the sun. The implications of the study are exciting, but Mole Lewis and her colleagues caution that it will take more research, hopefully direct observations, to back up these fi initial findings. Any of this gonna be interesting? Nope. Okay, I think we've learned everything we need to learn. So it's not the core, it's the atmosphere. It still seems kind of ridiculous. I don't know if I trust it. Uh, the Democrats completely screwed this up. I'm sure they did. That sounds like a uh, opinion more than actual news. After the Supreme Court killed the national right to have an abortion while nodding toward its intention to further attack bodily autonomy as a human right, leading Democrats responded by begging for money, reading poems, and singing God bless America. It's true. Even John Oliver called him out for all of that. And it's true. Not smart. Especially not the whole, hey, everything sucks. Give us money. <laughs> no. Excuse me? No. That's not a great way to get them to... When you're having a hard time getting them to even want to show up to the polls asking them for money is really not going to be the answer. You fucking morons. <laughs> Like, everyone hates you right now, and you're supposed to be the good guys, and this is insane. Uh, anyway. Valorant, we use your voice to train AI to detect disruptive things. Anything, I guess, and everything. Uh, and that's the end of Vice. Alright, now we can go move on to science and entertainment. Um, what am I doing here? Nintendo Direct coming tomorrow. Focus on third-party games. Nintendo is hosting another Nintendo Direct briefing this week, and it will focus on third-party games. Many broadcasts will contain about 25 minutes of information on the upcoming third-party Switch games. You know what I need? Butter. Ah, much better. Hmm. Kojima canned a radical superhero project for being too close to the boys. God damn it, boys. <laughs> How rude. Nintendo Direct Mini, we already talked about that. Obi-Wan soundtrack is now available. Discovery of a new mechanic may mean getting fully geared in Diablo Immortal would cost $540,000. Okay.
Sorry, I'm a little tired here. It's getting pretty late. Keep feeling like on the verge of nodding off. But we only got 228 more articles to scroll through. And most of them are fluff any now, anyway. Fall Guys Battle Pass, Courage is being a loser. That's good, because I am a loser. It's true. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Well, there's a story we can we can check out. <laughs> Solar-powered umbrellas sold at Costco have been recalled because they can burst into flames. The United States Consumer Product Safety Commission recalled Sun Villa's LED umbrella last Thursday due to battery problems. A new product recall is here to put a damper on your summer get-togethers. You know what? I am sharing this because that is an insane story. Moving on. Evan Rachel Wood and Lisa Joy on Restworld Season 4 and where the story ends. Evan Rachel Joy, uh, Evan Rachel Joy, Evan Rachel Wood is the treasure. And I totally ship those two. And then when they get married, you can change your name to Evan Rachel Joy. And I would be like, he was right, and you knew all along that was going to happen. Riverdale. Sabrina Spellman is returning to Riverdale. That's nice. That's nice of her. Okay, I have not watched Riverdale in a long time. Long, long, long time. Since, like, season two seems like things are very different now. Jesus, Alan Rickman's personal diary set for posthumous release? That's horrible. October 27th, 2002. I masturbated all day long. Yeah, I don't want to read some dude's personal diary. What the hell? That's private shit. When he was writing all about his sexcapades, he didn't expect that people were going to read it. What a world we live in, I'm telling you. New PUBG map, Destin, officially revealed, has a giant chicken in the sky. That's good. That's good to know. story bro the t largest tallest and densest map the game has ever seen wow wild why jewel vaping products might start disappearing from US stores well they already disappeared from Canadian stores so I'd love to get it I'm starting to think I want a, st a steam deck one day when I have the money when I have the money, which could be never. When I have the money, could be forever. Emma Roberts to make her Marvel debut in Sony Spider Verse. Well, that doesn't count then, because that's not MCU. And also, that's shitty. I'd rather she be the MCU. It's Emma Roberts. Also, she's a mom now. 
I said that for no reason, but she's still hot. She's a MILF. Now she's a MILF. Fall Guys hit 20 million users in first weekend since free to play relaunch. I guess they're happy about that. Amelia Clark on whether or not she would come back for a Game of Thrones spinoff. I feel like that would be difficult, seeing as how she died. Unless the dragon flew her away and then brought her back to life and then fucked her. Yes, they are adding a patch to Diablo 2 and giving magic find and it starts on what, the 29th until the 4th or something? 30th or the 4th? I might have to check that out just for that magic find. You can't make mineral water with plain old salt, but you can try. Smet, uh, smart pet do smet. Smart pet door uses facial recognition to keep critters out, okay? See, this one says June 29th, and the other one said June 30th. Very confusing. Valve will double the number of Steam decks it will ship. It just still won't give one to... Um, Greg Miller of uh, Kinda Funny. Seth MacFarlane to publish bonus the Orville novella next month. Are you telling me he wrote a novella? <laughs> because that is Jeremy. Fuck him for going into my territory. Thank you very much. <laughs> Insane. Due to COVID shutdowns, you had to scrap one episode of or Orville New Horizons. It was an outlier, a conceptually experimental story. Rather than it vanish, I decided to adapt it as a novelization, available digitally. So was it really him, or was it like a ghostwriter? Maybe like, he was gonna write it, but then a ghost came. He's like, oh my god, it's a spooky ghost. And then the ghost wrote it. You don't know. You don't. Don't say that you do, because you don't. Do 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 more fluff. Watch how Stranger Things running up that hill scene was created. Green screen. Lots and lots of green screen. You're welcome. Yes, I heard this. Pokemon card game player uses comically large cards at championship. Apparently, uh Pokemon cards in the past have released novelty cards, which are just like the normal cards but larger. Um, and so he collected them and got enough to create an actual deck. The problem is they never made energy cards larger, so it was a deck that couldn't actually do anything. <laughs> so he just kind of played it for novelty fun and lost every time. Some Fall Guys players are getting frustrated with the new free-to-play model. Aw, poor baby. I recreated Twilight in Sims 4 and everyone died. That sounds about right. What's new on Disney Plus in July? You'll never know. Oh, blah, blah. Any of it interesting? Blah, 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 blah. Nobody cares. Okay, cool. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. Nobody cared.
Sam Raimi confirmed that John Krasinski's Doctor Strange came with nothing but fan servers. Yeah, they're saying that just because he was uh, Mr. Fantastic in um, Doctor Strange does not mean that he will continue to be Mr. Fantastic in a Fantastic Four movie. That they even if they do a Fantastic Four movie, it could be a different Fantastic Four, a uh, different Mr. Fantastic. Skyrim mod offers 16k dragon textures. Damn, motherfucker. Damn. Obi-Wan Kenobi was originally conceived as a trilogy, and we've only seen part one. <sighs> of course. I keep seeing these Steam Deck articles. It's like, ah, oh, I know, I want a Steam Deck. Shut up. Nintendo Direct confirmed and Metroid Prime Remastered may be coming soon. Is that the whole trilogy remastered? Or Ooh, and a new Mario one plus Rabbids is pretty cool. So I haven't played the first one, but I love XCOM, so it's only a matter of time. And we're nearing the end of this, too. That's very exciting. January 6th panel to hold surprise hearing and pre present new evidence. Wow. It must be it must be a pretty big deal if uh, it, they change their already confident plan to include it. So I'm curious what that's going to be. Uh, but anyway, until then, we have reached the end of this road. And we don't have any questions or anything. If anybody wanted to give a question, they could ask a question, but nobody's asking any questions. Um, so I think we're just going to call it there. Anything else I want to do? I do not believe so. Oakley doakley. So, until tomorrow night, live long and prosper, and uh, may the force be with you. <laughs>